For example, what if I use A weighting, what it does is when I have like a 50 dB SPL at 500 hertz, then if I, ha if I use A weighting factor, then what I have to do is I have to subtract out like 4 dB from what I measured. Okay? And I have to subtract 10 dB from what I measure at 250 hertz. That we call SPL, sound pressure level dBA. That is dB decibel A weighted dB, A weighted sound pressure level. If I use B weight, then I will write dB weighted by B curve. Okay? That is simple. Why we use A weighting, B weighting, C weighting? To take into account our auditory system's sens sensitivity on frequency scale. So when you measure noise, dB scale has less physical meaning than dBA. And you have to express dBA with respect to octave frequency or one-third octave frequency. When you're concerned about the noise, noise means that the sound we feel. Right? So depending on what you interest, you have to select Y and X coordinate. Depending on your interest, you may select a linear coordinate in, 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 in this axis or linear co linear frequency axis. For example, when you when you when you when you do the uh, analysis, maybe linear scale is more appropriate. But when you when you handle the noise problem, dBA scale and octave or one octave scale is more sensible because you're handling noise. That's the highlight of my summary. Okay, let's move on to analysis problem. Let me ask you why we analyze or solve our differential equation. The differential equation, acoustic differential, acoustic governing equation, is simply that is homogeneous partial differential equation. Plus boundary condition. And we, we can find the solution using Green's function method, second modal analysis method. And uh, let me ask you why we do the uh, analysis. Of course, there are many reasons. But I would say reason why we are doing analysis is to get more the physical insights. That's one reason. Another reason is to explore what we do not know, for example. But that's a more difficult problem. I saw a baseball game last night and I I recognize that our TV, I mean the digital recording, digital broadcasting system is very advanced so I can see even the rotation of ball. Right? We can see the rotation of ball very precisely in a TV. Right? We can even see the seam of the ball. So I said, Okay, if, I, if we can simulate the turbulence that is induced by the rotation and motion of the ball uh, in real time, 
and predict where it, the ball can go, then it would be very nice. So during the lunch time, I discussed with the uh, professors who are doing fluid mechanics. Hey, why don't you guys do make that kind of simulation program and make a lot of money? And they said, that's not possible. Uh, it's our challenge, right? If we dream, then we can do it sometime. Yeah? Why don't we make uh, some simulation program that can really simulate the, the, the trajectory of the ball? Right? And then when pitchers throw the ball, on TV, we can see where it goes. And we can see in slow motion, of course, the way the hitter drives the bat. And we can expect, hey, this guy will cannot hit the ball. Oh, this guy will hit the ball, but it's going to go the backside and so on, so on. That we can enjoy a lot of different things. Can you simulate this? It's more difficult because what we are handling is from low frequency to high frequency, 20 kilohertz. 20 kilohertz simulation means I have to predict the fluctuation of pressure signal that fluctuate 16K right, hertz. That is not trivial. But later on, maybe you can, you guys can do it. Then we can see, for example, you, you can have a, some, some, uh, some device that shows digital video. And when I speak, your simulation system simulate what is happening and then overlay to the video, digital video. That will be. Fantastic, right? When I speak, when you take take a picture of me, then you can see my visual image as well as my acoustic image at the same time. Why not? And you guys can do it based on my lecture. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> so that. It's the uh, one good side of an doing analysis. But I would like to be conservative. So I, I, I would like to use this analysis problem to introduce you more physical insights. Okay? So as, as we saw already, for the string, the governing equation was at that time I used the y okay and depending on boundary condition We can we can have the solution, right? We can we can use Green's function if you like, or we can use Eigen function, depending on your interest. The same approach we can use to solve acoustic wave equation problem. But I will not go detail about that. Okay. But let's see. what really happened by seeing the simplest case. So let's see the simplest solution. First, plane wave solution. Okay. For one dimensional case, I can write wave like this. 
Okay? That is the wave, acoustic wave, pressure wave propagating in x direction. 